Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing something slightly different than usual. We are going to be doing Photoshop color grading. And as you guys know, I usually use Lightroom for my color grading because I use my presets, but recently I got to check out infinite color panels. And this is not a sponsored video. I am friends with Pratik who happens to be the owner of the panel and he was kind enough to give it to me to test out and to see what I think. And because I liked it so much, I thought that you guys might like it too. So I want to make this video just showing you how I use it, how I adjust it, how I play around with the colors and so on and hopefully some of you will like it too. Before we get into this video please make sure to subscribe to my channel and click the little bell button to not miss any of my future videos and let's get right into it. Color grading can be pretty challenging regardless of the stage you're at in your photography. And I think the idea behind the infinite color panels was so to make it a tiny bit easier and accessible for everybody. You kind of get an idea, you can play around with different colors and different settings and you get um, a gist of what you like and what you don't like and you can adjust accordingly. So it's a nice way to explore if you are especially new into color grading and you're not really sure what you like and what you don't like. You can just click different settings, you can customize it, you can adjust it and this way you'll be able to get the results that you hopefully like. Okay, so as you guys see here, I'm going to be showing you a few images that we have. Um, we have different kind of settings and different kind of light situations, a few from the same shoot and a few from a different one, just to kind of give you an idea of how to work with the program. So this is it here. It's infinite color. You can put it anywhere you want on the screen. I just have it here to the side because I think it's pretty good. So in general, the whole idea is to just randomly customize your colors and just click and see what you like. Like. There's also this thing where you can select light, medium or intense, which basically gives you an idea of do you want a very strong color, do you want something a bit more medium or do you want like a light color adjustment. And I think in terms of the settings, I feel like I'm going to be using light the most because I do like to be pretty um, specific about my colors. So I'm going to be doing it this way. You can also shuffle. You have, you know, curves, color balance, selective color, gradient map, and color lookup. You can deselect any of those things if you don't want them, but I'll be talking about it in a minute. So we're gonna start with this image here. I took it recently. The BTS is not up yet, but it will be soon. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna just click create and we are on light setting. And basically it will give me a few different color, randomized color selections. So I can kind of basically click until I see something that I like and it will kind of give me a few cool ideas of what I could do with my images, which I think is really nice. Okay, so what I do find is that there is a stronger green overcast, which I'm maybe not too keen on. So let's see which one is the one affecting it this way. I think it's the selective color that actually gives this kind of like a orangey red um, of hue to the shadows. So maybe what we can do is we can click this thing here, shuffle into selective colors. And this way, nothing else changes. The settings that we had originally stay the same, but the selective color. So we can see kind of here a few different adjustments. So basically there's endless possibilities and you can just keep clicking and keep checking at what's gonna work the best for you. I actually really like this one. I think it's pretty cool. I think it's kind of like a very coolish kind of vibe, but I do like it. So let's see, that's the before and that's the after. So as you see, it's much more balanced and much more uh, neutral in a sense. So now what you can also do in this program is to stack one on top of the other. So what I can do is um, maybe rename this channel and instead of having an infinite color, I'll call it um, layer one. One, perfect. And now I can get on to another um, layer of infinite color. So basically when you rename, you can create another layer on top of that. If you don't rename the infinite color, it's gonna keep overwriting on the old, old settings. So you just have to keep that in mind. So what you can also do is you can decide on the opacity that you like, how intense you want the image to be, if you want any stronger kind of um, tints and colors. So for example, this one, it's very red, but I kind of feel like if I brought it down quite a bit on opacity, it would look maybe nice, we'll see. 
so that's not bad yeah i kind of like that i think that's pretty good if the opacity is maybe like 25 because it gives a tiny bit more richness and warmth into the image so we're gonna do maybe call it layer two just for the sake of it okay so we have two layers now I'm kind of tempted by the orange. I don't know if it's gonna work very well, but let's see. I feel like I wanted more on the skin, but not necessarily as much on the rest of the background. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to mask it out. So I'm going to go into opacity, maybe like 40, and then go into infinite color panel. I'm going to click on the mask here, and I'm going to use, first I'm gonna invert it, so command I. And then I'm going to go just over the skin with the white brush. So we're getting just a tiny bit of warmth on her, but not necessarily on the background. And here we have the before and after. So as you see, the colors are way more um, balanced. They are not as warm and yellow. Um, there's way more contrast in the greens and the skin. I think it brings out the skin really lovely and it just gives you a really, really nice look. I really love how this image turned out. Now, this is another image from the same shoot. You know, you can try medium or intense color as well, but I think it's going to be a bit extreme. Let's just try. Let's just try for the kicks. Do you know what? I actually do really like it. The first one. Oh, I think it's really nice. Okay. So even though it's intense, I, I don't think it's that intense. I actually really like it. So you can see the before and after that it's for sure it's a lot, but maybe if I bring down the opacity to 50. So here, here it is, you know, if you see a color that you like, but you're not really sure if it's maybe a bit too much or not, you can just bring the opacity and this way you're going to minimize the effect that it has on the image. Okay, and now we're gonna go again. Let's just see, yeah, this is pretty intense. Okay, let's go back maybe to light or maybe to medium. Let's see how medium looks. Okay, I kind of dig the blue though. I think the blue is actually pretty nice again. It's kind of topping up what the other one did. It's kind of balancing out the green as well, which I think is really lovely. You can also go Command Z if you want to go back to any of the previous adjustments and it's going to go back step by step of how you've done it. So now we're gonna call this layer two. We can delete this and now we're gonna go again so i think for this particular image i would love for it to be a tiny bit warmer in general i think it would be pretty nice oh i really like this i think that's a really nice vibe the light is so lovely it just brings out a tiny bit of highlight and just makes the blues a bit more balanced so as you see here we're getting richer and richer colors we're getting lovely contrasts and it's really fun because you can really build it up step by step and kind of play around with different settings with different opacities um, seeing what works for you and you know it kind of makes it a bit more fun rather than just scary color grading your images. And I find, you know, especially when I started out and I was first color grading in Photoshop, it was such a daunting task for me because I just didn't know what to do. And here with this one, it's just, it's just so simple. You see here, we got a lovely highlights, lovely warmer tones in the skin and so on. So I think it works very well. Here's another image that I have and we're just gonna keep going until we find something that we like. I think for this one, I'll definitely divide it into skin and the rest of the background. For example, here, I really love how the greens look. So what I might do is I might go here, name this background and then create a mask. Um, and then I'll mask out the models. I'll actually I'll invert it first because I think it's just depending on how big the subject is. If there's just a background here, I would rather just invert it and then mask out the area that I want in this specific color. So I'll just go here. I'll increase my floats maybe 25 and now just go behind her head and try to do the setup here. As you see here, her hair is dark, so it doesn't really affect the color that much, which is good. Obviously, if she was blonde, you'd have to be a bit more careful with the colors and how they work. But for this particular one, because her hair is black, it's fine. So for the skin, I like the contrast on it. I'm not sure if I like the tone of the skin that much. I think it's just a tiny bit too red. I feel like maybe it's the selective color. It's definitely the selective color. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna shuffle the selective color a few times and see if there's any tones that we like more 
I actually really like this one. It's kind of a bit more subtle as not as much as the other one, but it's not as, um, you know, it's not as red, which is kind of good because I don't like my skin being too red. But at the same time, now it's changed the background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this skin. Sorry, I'm going to create a mask and then I'm going to do this, which is like a rough mask of what I did the previous time. Command I and there we go. So with Command I, I just deselected this background bit basically and just kept the skin as it is. So now I have the nice adjustment on the skin and the nice adjustment on the background, but they don't really intertwine otherwise, which is pretty good. So as you see here, that's what the skin was. And now what it is, is just a tiny bit cooler. The highlights are popping a tiny bit. There's a bit more contrast, which I think works pretty well for this particular shot. Okay, so now that we have skin and the background, let's just go again and try and see different colors. Because why not? We're going to select the curves. I think I were deselected on the previous one, but it's fine. It's okay. It's not a big deal. Okay. We need to change from medium to back to, Oh, I actually really like this. This is like a very vintagey Lana Del Rey kind of vibe. I probably wouldn't use it, but so that's the thing. A lot of the time when I'm color grading, regardless if I color grade in Lightroom or in Photoshop, I go tiny little steps. I don't just go and color grade everything at once. I do a tiny little bit at a time and I just stack up one on top of the other. And I think it's a better option rather than just, you know, clicking once and being like, oh, this is my color. That's it. So this is the before and this is the after. Okay, and this is our final image of today. We are going to be playing with this one. So you can go with it very easy. You can just click one setup and then you'll be like, okay, I'm done, I'm happy with this. So, you know, like this one here, it looks really cool. It's nice and warm. It's much richer in tone. Maybe I'll shuffle the curve a tiny bit or maybe not. Color balance, no. Selective color, no. So as you see here, sometimes you can just click one and it will work and it's perfect. But then sometimes you just need a bit more. So it all depends on your images. It all depends on how the work looks, what you're happy with and so on. But I think it's just so cool that it gives you so many different possibilities of how to color grade your images. It helps you explore different colors and work with different um, tones and so on. I think it's really, really nice in this sense. Okay, guys, I think that's it. Um, I think it's a really, really cool program. I really do love it. I've been using it from time to time myself. Pratik was lovely enough to offer us a lovely discount. So each one of you that wants to buy the panels is going to get $40 off, which is such an amazing deal. I'm going to put all the info down below. So make sure to check it out. And if you did like it and you did end up using it, let me know what you think about it. Let me know if you think it's worth the money and maybe share your photos with me. And I would love to show it to Pratik as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys next time.